I'm Diane Wedner with LifeScript.com at the Clinton Health Matters Conference in La Quinta, California, and I have the pleasure of speaking this morning with Dr. Patrick Sun Xiong. How about if you tell us what it is, the science that you're involved in? So we've been working right now on developing the genomic and proteomic fingerprint of a patient with cancer. What's exciting, we now brought this to a clinical world so that patients could get actionable information. We could actively potentially predict what drug the patient should be on and actually advance the patient into the most advanced clinical trials. I have found it extremely interesting to see the connection between genomic sequencing, that science, as it applies to medical treatments. And I was wondering if you could explain in simple lay terms, just in general, how those two come together and to the benefit of humankind right now. Right, and, and it's a very complex subject, so I'm going to try and make this as simple as I can. But what's exciting is that a cancer cell has morphed and changed, and one of the things it does is it continues to grow and change because of a mutation. It means that your body is, has been exposed to some toxins, but you don't inherit cancer, you actually get it, meaning that it's as a result of some thing that's happened in your life, either toxic exposure. You may have a risk for it, but the genes don't actually create it. What happens is that once you have the genes mutated, it actually then goes downstream and drives proteins which cause the cancer cells to grow. So what has eluded us since us discovering the Human Genome Project is not only to analyze the genes, but at the same time analyze the proteins. And then compare the genes and the proteins from the normal tissue to the cancer tissue from the same patient in the same slide with the thing called the laser microdissection. That's what we've been able to accomplish. And what does that do? What does that tell you? If you can identify both the normal and the abnormal, not only gene but protein, you can then identify what's driving that cancer and then predict which drug to give based on what's driving that cancer. And because you know the protein pathway, you know that by giving that drug potentially, it'll have an escape mechanism and anticipate that escape mechanism so that you can have the other drug either in combination or ready to give as you want it to. That's amazing. And are these the drugs that we're currently using these for are, chemotherapy? These are both what's exciting, both the drugs we're currently using, which is these chemical poisons, and the drugs that's being developed as we sit and speak against targets. Finally, based on some information I got, I did some research with the uh, scientists at the Edith Sanford Foundation. They were talking about the same of genomic sequencing and its application to medicine. And one of the doctors there had mentioned there really may be a cure for cancer, for some cancers in five years. Does that sound optimistic or does that sound realistic? Well, I think what we need to, we put ourselves now, and I call it this way, finally onto the path to the cure. Meaning that we can now chase the cell, touch it, feel it, understand it at what I call the atomolar level as it's changing in response to our treatment. Never could do that before. And because we can do that, we now have given ourselves a fighting chance uh, to, to get there. Very exciting and wonderful that you're on the front lines of this work. <laughs> Thank you so much right, for talking to welcome. me.